So we're going to elevate our minds and we're going to go higher. We're looking for God to constantly take us higher, that we can understand his word as he give it to us, and that's in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask that you turn with me to the book of John. That's the gospel of John, chapter 11. We're going to start reading at verse 17. I find that even in my life, there's some things that you, that I have wanted to let go of, and God had to show me not in my might and in my power, but by his spirit. When we are saved by grace through faith, our spirit is saved instantly. But the emotions, the mind, need to be transformed, need to be regenerated. And the only way that that can take place, that has to be regenerated by the word of God. By reading the word of God, coming to an understanding of the word of God. Amen. And I heard the word say that the word is not for private interpretation. Amen. Amen. You cannot privately interpret the word of God. In order to understand the word of God, you must receive revelation from the Holy Ghost. Those of us that's not baptized with the Holy Ghost and have not received the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you can get it on tonight. Amen? And if I was you, I wouldn't leave without it. Because the Holy Ghost and fire is our power. Hallelujah. Those of us that have faith in Jesus Christ, he also promised us the gift of the comforter. And in the promise of the gift of the comforter, the comforter is our keeper and he's our teacher. Amen? So, there's no sense in having just salvation and not having it all. Let me hear someone say, I want it all, Jesus. I want it all, Jesus. I want it all. And all that he promised in his word, I'm greedy in the spirit. Hallelujah. And I'm greedy for those spiritual things. The word of God says, set your affections on those things above and not beneath. Amen. Amen. That the heaven and earth, all of this is going to pass away. But the one thing that we need to grab hold of is the one thing that's going to last forever. The word of God. Jesus. Everything is going down but the word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everything Amen. is going down but the word of God. The word says that this heaven and earth is going to pass away. Amen, Jesus. But the word of God, Jesus is the living word. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask that you stand on your feet. We're going to read from 17 to 27 responsibly. And then we're going to let the Holy Spirit do what he does. I'm going to read the first verse. You'll read the second and we'll read 27 together. Then when Jesus came, do everyone have it? I'm sorry. John 11 and 17. I like to read it like this because we are word church. Sometimes people don't read the word at home. So ain't no sense in letting them come into church and not being able to read it. Amen? Amen. Got to get it. Get it, get it, get it. Nothing but the word. Amen. How are you, Zion? Good. Hallelujah. That's all right with me. I'm good, too. Amen. Jesus. I'm good because Jesus is good. Are y'all ready? Then when Jesus came, he found that he, being Lazarus, had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming went and meet him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not gone. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, your brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of that last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? 
She said unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. The word of God is blessed. How many of us believe on tonight? Yes, Lord. How many of us believe that he is the Christ, yes, the Son of God that has come into the world? Amen. You may be seated. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, hide me behind your cross. Amen. Let it be you that they see. Don't let it be me. Let it be you that they hear, oh God. Let it be your voice, friend. Let your word be what you said it would be, a double-edged sword on tonight. Let it be alive and active. Let it penetrate and separate. Let it judge the very thoughts and the attitudes of the hearers. Let it judge their heart, oh God. Hallelujah. Make us over, make us anew. And what it is that we hear in your word on today, let it be done unto us. In Jesus' name. Jesus. We're looking for the word to fall on good ground on tonight. Bishop, I'm going to ask that you start, start reading at verse 17. But before he start reading, I just want to share with you that if I had a thought to leave with you on tonight, it would be that the dead cannot resurrect the dead. Amen? Jesus. Sin don't cast out sin. A house divided cannot stand. Amen. And if you have not the spirit of Jesus Christ in you, Hallelujah, you cannot resurrect the dead. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and read Bishop, started at 17. Verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now he being Lazarus, the brother of, of Mary and Martha, amen, lay in the grave for four days. He began to decompose. He began to stink. You know that they had to believe that ain't nowhere in the world. Jesus was raising people from the dead and he was healing the sick. But was it none of them decomposing and stinking? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So now you find that Mary and Martha, they upset with the king of kings, with the king of glory. They got a little attitude. You ever had any attitude with Jesus? Jesus, where you been? Amen? I've been calling you all day, all night. I've been calling you for months. I need something. It's not enough that we call on him when we need something. Because if we have a relationship with Jesus, amen, and if we call on him, and not just in our time of need, but we, we, we speak to him when we don't need nothing, we just call on him and say, oh, Jesus, I just want to worship you. I just want to bless you. Not really looking for you to be a blessing unto me, but I just want to bless you. We can rest in him, amen? Jesus. Who, how many of us have a relationship on tonight? Thank God for relationship. Yeah. That even when he don't show up, when we think he, when we think that he should, we know that he's always right on time. Out of relationship, you know that even if he show up after four days in the, in, in the grave, that it is not too late. Some of us have been in the grave too long. Amen? Amen. We all have been born in sin and shaped in iniquity. I'm here to tell you that all of us are born dead. Hey, go both. Shabbat shabbat. Not until you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior do you begin to live. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us are just the walking dead. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read, Bishop. Verse 18. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem. About 15 furlongs off. Go ahead and read. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary. In these days they paid for mourners. Go ahead and read. To comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. You remember when Jesus, when Mary sat at Jesus' feet? And they condemned Martha for being in the kitchen. And they said that Mary chose the better part. Somebody got to cook. Amen. Somebody got to do something. Martha was serving that way, and Mary chose to be at his feet. But now there's a flip. You find that Mary stays with the mourners, and Martha runs out to meet the king. Amen. She runs out to meet Jesus. Go ahead and read. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. There go Martha with her attitude. Hey, man, she probably was moving her neck, 
pointing her finger. Jesus, you know what time it is. Amen. Y'all know how we do it. Sometimes I'm like that with Bishop. Amen. Until the Holy Spirit checked me and I have learned I got to submit. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God says submit. The man is the head. Amen. Woman, you are not running anything. He is the head. When you choose him as your husband, ooh, Jesus, you said that I will follow him as he followed Christ. So now, I don't care if you've been running your own life. I don't care if you think you're the bomb. Amen? You've been doing the thing. You brought yourself this far. Bring it down a notch. Amen? Let him assume his position. Let the man be who it is that God called him to be in the family. Amen? And all the time, everything that he say may not be right. But as long as it's not taking you out of the word of God and ain't hurting your salvation, amen, you got to roll with it. And if it ain't right, if it ain't right, baby, it's all right. Well, let's try it another way. Amen? Amen. Yeah, Jesus. Where's our submitters in the house? Who's been submitting? I submit sometimes. See, I'm honest. Amen? I'm going to tell you, I submit sometimes. Amen? And God is working on me. I'm a work in progress. Amen? Because the word of God says to submit to your husband. I'm submitting to mine. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Not because of him, but because I need to be aligned with the word of God. Everything that we do, we do it as if we're doing it unto God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Stay in his will. Yeah. Bishop. Amen. Bishop. Mm -hmm. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Uh -huh, Verse 23. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Read. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Whatever it is, because of the great exploits that Jesus has done in the earth, she said, whatever it is that you ask God for, I know that you will do it. Do you know that God gave us that same power? Whatever we ask in Jesus' name that he will do, only if we will believe. Amen? She says that I know that my brother will rise again. Now, she's talking about the resurrection, the second coming of Christ. But Jesus is about to show them the power of God. Amen? Even that which has been in the grave for many years, stinking and decomposed, eaten by ants and worms or whatever else, all of that stuff had to do with regurgitate what it is that they have eaten from the body of Lazarus because what? Jesus is about to call him forth. Oh, my God, my God. Some of us has been in sin too long. Some of us, even in Christ, has been in some things that we have not let go of. Amen. Amen. The word of God says not by our might or by our power, but by his spirit. Today, through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, it can all be behind you. All you have to do is believe. Believe on the word, the living word, Jesus Christ. Read, brother. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou ask, okay, I'm at verse 25. Yes. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live. He that believes in Jesus. He says, this tells us that the resurrection and the life is not a doctrine. Amen? He is a person. Jesus says, look at me. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen? Hallelujah. And he says, he who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Every dead bone can live. Every dead area in your life can be resurrected by the resurrection power of God on today if you just believe. He will turn it around. All you have to do is believe. And then 26 says, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Everybody's talking about this natural death. The word of God ain't talking about natural things. When Adam and Eve was in the garden, God told them, if you eat of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you shall surely die. Man has died once already. A spiritual death. 
He was disconnected from God and he died spiritually instantly in the Garden of Eden. Now resurrection and life has come. And those of us that believe will never die again. He's not talking about their natural death. Because the body goes to sleep and dies when we leave here. But the spirit and the soul goes back to Jesus. It journeys on. The body within itself is just a a, 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 a casing. And when Jesus formed man from the dust of the ground, the body was dead. It was not until he blew light into man did man become a living soul. So what he's telling you is that that which I blew into you will never die again. That if you believe on me, the resurrection and the life, the glory, man, amen, that you shall live. And that you shall never die. We get to pick and choose now where will we spend eternity. Because once we cross over on the other side of the grave, there is no mercy. There is no more salvation. The body dies and it knows nothing, says the word of God. Verse 27 says that she said unto him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, which should come into the world. For those of you on today that believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, that power dwelleth within you. Everything that you touch must live. Amen. It must resurrect your relationships, Jesus. your children. He go both shout out. That's right, woman of God. That's right. Get a visual. Get a visual. Amen. Get a visual. Everything must live. If it ain't living, your faith is misplaced. Amen. If it ain't visual, you stop believing somewhere. Doubt has set in. If it ain't living. Because ain't nothing wrong with God's word. God's word is spirit and truth. Amen? If it ain't living, something is up with your faith. Isn't that right, Brother Zion? Come on now, prophet. What's not living in your life on today? What done died? He go, whoa, she go, ba, ba, ba. And how can it die when the resurrection and life live within you? Where is your power? Where is your power? Bishop and how we had some issues. I sent the man of God away. And God said to me, what's up with your man? I had to go and get my man. Amen. I had to go and get my man. Amen. Because I was out of order. Thus says the word of God. I couldn't look at what took place. There was no right and no wrong. Because this is a win-win situation. Marriage and marriage we are one. We either win together or we both lose. Ain't nobody winning if we both don't win. We both have to win in Christ. We both must win in Jesus. So I ask you on today. Hallelujah. What do we need resurrected in our life? This is healing and deliverance service. We come into the house of God.